गुड इवनिंग नमस्ते एवरीबॉडी जय गुरु वेलकम टू टूडेज पतंजलि क्लास दिस इज द पेनल्टीमेट क्लास ऑफ द होल सीरीज ऑफ पतंजलि योग सूत्र एज ऑलवेज लेट अस बिगिन द क्लास विद अ प्रेयर लेट्स इनवोक द प्रेजेंस ऑफ गॉड एंड द गुरु लेट अस प्रे टुगेदर हेवनली फादर डिवाइन मदर फ्रेंड बिलविड गॉड भगवान कृष्ण जीसस क्राइस्ट महा अवतार बाबा जी लहरी महाशय स्वामी श्री युक्तेश्वर जी बिलाविड गुरुदेव परमहंस योगानंदा जी फ्रेंड एंड गाइड स्वामी क्रियानंदा जी सेंट्स एंड सेजेस ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स ग्रेट सेजेस वेद व्यास महर्षि पतंजलि आदि शंकराचार्य हम ली वी बाव एंड टच दाई फीट dear lord dear divine mother teach me to remember thee in poverty and prosperity in sickness and in health in ignorance in wisdom in life and in death teach me to open my closed eyes of unbelief and behold thine instantaneously healing light om shanti 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 let us invoke the presence of the gurus by singing the hymn to brahma <clears throat>
Let's introspect for a moment and realize for ourselves as to who really lives through our bodily temple. To who does this temple belong? How does this temple function? How does it interact and transact in this world? It is a moving temple. But who is the deity who sits inside this temple? Is it Maya, the world and its temptations? Or is it the ever pure absolute Lord for whose pleasure this whole world is, ex exists? The more and more we meditate, we realize that the changeless absolute one God lives through this body and not just this body, but through all bodies. So not only our bodies are temples, but the bodies of all others around us are temples because the presiding and the ruling deity therein is our one God. Remembering this, let us behave and transact in this world. <clears throat> Let us hear a few thoughts on perseverance by Swami Jina. Perseverance is a very important virtue on the spiritual path because uh, with the help of this virtue, we have to go till the end. Remember, till as long as we are breathing in this life, till our last breath, we have to persevere in our devotion to God, in our sincerity to God, in, in the work that we go, do as children and servants of God, in our love for everybody, in our meditation practices. Whatever we may do now, we have to persevere. We have to add on to our efforts and we have to persevere till our last breath. Swamiji says, loyalty is the first law of God. Most people are fickle. They change their jobs, their spouses, their friends, their beliefs, their ideas, not because of any new expansion of awareness, but because they lack the simple power of perseverance. One must be loyal to one's principles and not allow oneself to be ruled by sentiment. To be loyal to others and to one's assumed goals in life, not for sentimental reasons, but in the name of principle, is the way of divine progress. Perseverance can be difficult, for in every undertaking, there is a certain amount of dull routine. Don't be ruled, therefore, by likes and dislikes but do whatever has to be done. If it is right, let nothing intervene until the job is finished. Let us do the following affirmation. I will finish what I set my mind to do before leaving it for something else. My word is my bond so also is my resolution. I will finish what I set my mind to do before leaving it for something else. My word is my bond, so also is my resolution. I will finish what I set my mind to do before leaving it or something else. My word is my bond, so also is my resolution. Mentally follow this prayer. Though the sirens of distraction call me to turn aside and relax the sternness of my dedication, keep me steadfast on my path, my Lord, my goal in life is thee alone.
ओम शांति 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 we now come to our story section and uh, i've picked up two stories for today the first is the story of the rich man who found happiness so again these are stories are told by master and this is how it goes in new york city i met a prominent industrialist a powerful man who had 15000 employees in his company someone had asked him to come to see me he came jauntily into the hotel where i was staying whirling his walking stick his appearance was that of a very proud man and his facial expression said who is this hindu with long hair in the course of telling me something about his life he drawled i am disgustingly wealthy i am disgustingly healthy and before he could finish i exclaimed but you are not disgustingly happy i can teach you how to be perpetually interested in being ever newly happy he became my student by practicing kriya yoga and by leading a balanced life ever inwardly devoted to god he lived to a ripe old age always bubbling with ever new happiness on his deathbed he told his wife i am sorry for you that you have to see me go but i am very happy to join my beloved of the universe rejoice at my joy and don't be selfish by sorrowing if you knew how happy i am going to be to meet my beloved god you wouldn't be sad rejoice to know that you will some day join me in the festivity of eternal bliss and saying this he went wasn't that a wonderful way to go he was a very very faithful student of this path those who never miss kriya and who sit long in meditation and pray intensely to god will discover the longed for treasure to end this master just gives a prayer says i will make a sacred yagya fire of all my desires for material possessions and burn them in the one great ever increasing flame of desire that seeks only to know thee the other story is is slightly different different flavor from this one and uh, the the first story is here to tell us we all know this by now that wealth is not our ultimate goal even bodily health is not our ultimate goal the relationships of our of this world are not our ultimate goal um just doing our jobs and just fulfilling our worldly duties is again not our goal so most of us in fact i think all of us have realized by now that god realization is what we are born for and that is our ultimate goal and that is the ultimate duty and if we stick to the path that have, that our guru has offered to us the the results of ever new joy are guaranteed now that ever new joy will not only come after we leave these bodies in death but that ever new joy becomes a living reality even while we are living in our bodies so making god or ever new joy a reality today I means simply master says be regular with your kriya practice be sincere in your heart and have a loving heart towards god and all and that does it so the, the sachidananda the absolute joy it starts to become our own reality and then whatever happens on the outside we are still you know established in peace calmness and joy okay so the other story is the ever changing yet changeless krishna so this is a reminder of how you know krishna is you cannot just fix him to a form everything in our life whether it is in form or it's abstract is actually krishna and this this story helps to highlight that fact okay many centuries ago a great artist in the course of his extensive travels arrived at the court of king balram of india 
the artist boasted that he had been received by kings of many countries. They had permitted him to paint their portraits and pleased by his excellent work, had lavished on him costly presents. The artist had heard that King Balram's brother, Sri Krishna was the embodiment of divine beauty. So he had come to the palace to ask permission to paint a portrait of Krishna. King Balram was persuaded to send for Sri Krishna and ask him to pose for the artist. Krishna willingly complied with his older brother's request. The artist finished the portrait in a few hours and proudly presented it to King Balram. Krishna was sitting near his brother. When the king saw the painting, he was astonished and said it bore absolutely no resemblance to Krishna. Looking at his work and then at Krishna, the artist had to agree that he must have painted his own conception as it was not a true likeness at all. He pleaded for permission to try again. Shri Krishna consented to another sitting, but the second portrait also was a dismal failure. Undaunted, the artist tried again and again and again over a period of 12 years. With unceasing patience, he plied all his skill in unsuccessful attempts to reproduce a painting of the beauty and spirituality of Krishna. At last, he became so discouraged by failure that he wanted to end his life. Fortunately, just at that time, the great Rishi devotee Narada appeared on the scene. He told the distraught artist he would show him the way to reproduce a true likeness of Sri Krishna. Narada requested the artist to do exactly as he told him and to introduce him as his guru. The painter thus introduced Narada to Sri Krishna the next day. Narada was carrying a large picture frame covered with a black cloth. He asked Krishna to pose himself for the portrait and instructed the artist to hold the covered frame in front of Krishna. Narada requested Krishna to be very attentive as he was going to paint his portrait instantaneously. Krishna became all attention and so did the artist, as he eagerly watched to see what Narada would do. Narada then removed the black cloth and revealed a mirror in the frame. The artist saw that Sri Krishna appeared faithfully registered in the bright mirror, no matter how many times he changed his pose or transformed himself by divine power. And Sri Krishna knew then that the wise Narada had shown the frustrated artist the only way to enframe a likeness of his ever-changing yet changeless form. Only a mirror could register a constantly true image of Bhagwan Krishna. Master then goes on to explain, says, in this story, the Lord incarnate in Krishna taught the egotistical artist a lesson in humility. All intellectual and physical abilities and talents have severe limitations when one tries to use them as tools to function in the divine realm of spirit. The artist with his brush and palette and his senses of sight and touch could capture the likeness of great men on his canvas but he was hopelessly inept when he tried to portray the divine who posed before him in the form of Bhagavan Krishna. The moral of this story is that you cannot perceive God through inferences derived from the senses and the intellect. One who is well versed in the scriptures or who has had some spiritual inspiration might feel he has pictured the characteristics of God on the canvas of his mind. But just when he thinks he has perfectly portrayed God, the Lord will surprise him with a different aspect of himself. A guru who knows God 
can show you how to remove the dark cloth of sensory and intellectual limitation that covers the mirror of your soul's intuition. In that flawless looking glass, you will behold at last the perfect reflection of the ever-changing yet changeless spirit. Wow, this is so beautiful. And this is what is, I always refer this story to the beginning of Hanuman Chalisa, in which uh, the, the Chalisa begins, Shri Guru Charana Saroj Raj Nijman Mukuru Sudhar Barnau Raghubar Bimal Jasu Jo Dayak Falchar. What is the meaning of this? Shri Guru Charana Saroj Raj means Guru Ke Charan Ki Jo Saroj the, no, Raj hai, means Mitti hai. Nijman Mukur Sudhar means may I polish the mirror of my mind with the dust of the feet of my holy Guru. And once I can do that, then the Chavi of Raghuvar, Raghuvir, the, the one who is grants all the boons, that will be seen in my mind. And this is exactly the essence of this story. So all the scriptures, whether it is the Ramayana or the, or the, you know, uh, the Mahabharata, Gita, the Puranas, all of them uh, point to the same things, the importance of the Guru, which we cannot do without. And the, then with the grace of the Guru and the teachings and the techniques, we start to polish our mind, we polish our intellect, we fine tune our senses, we turn in our senses and we cleanse ourselves, we purify ourselves with the yamas and the niyamas, with karma yoga, jnana yoga, bhakti and raja yoga. We become cleaner and cleaner till the point where we see that we are more beyond the mind and that we can see the reflection or the image of God within ourselves. And that is God realization or self realization. So it is important that we do not have fixed ideas, fixed definitions of, of, of black or white in this world. Know that everything is Brahman, everything is God, everything is Krishna, all things, all people, all movement. And yet behind that is that beautiful, changeless one reality so if we just with our open eyes uh, see that everything is god it, we have we kind of transcend the worldly limitations so even though when we see variety we see different colors we did see different personalities but let us in, remind ourselves all the time that all is god and this practice becomes easier only after we have had some experience on the inside with meditation that we are more than this physical reality. So once you start to experience an abstract qualities inside yourself, then you can project it on the outside and see that everything is one. So in your meditation, feel your oneness with the universe, with open eyes as you work with the universe, know that everything is God. And this way, step by step over the years, as the layers of dust that have fallen over our soul, they are removed, we come to the ultimate truth of who we are, which is the image or reflection of God himself. Okay, with that thought, let us move to our uh, Patanjali Yoga Sutras. We have finished till 19 Sutras. And just a recollection of what we did in the last class was Patanjali was giving the science of the mind in which he was saying that the same object can be perceived by different minds as different. And the different minds perceive the same aspect differently because of the coloring the mind has obtained from this world. And that is why we find that there are so many different personalities. They have different people have different sets of desires, attachments, personal likings and dislikings, you know, sets of hatreds and, and love for people and, and all that, the shades of color which are involved so it's likes and dislikes is again not just black and white there are thousands of shades of gray with gradations inside that too 
in that duality so uh, according to the what the mind has been colored with this is how we are going to perceive the objects of this world and even beyond so what do we do here is hum apne man par kaun sa rang chadhaye agar hamare man par ranga rang chad chuka hai is duniya ka to ab humne kaun sa rang chadhana hai ab humne bhagwan roopi rang chadhana hai jisse ki jo dusra wala rang hai jo mail hai wo dhul jaye I remember uh, saying from Neem Karoli Baba, he would used to say that the clothes are easy to wear, dye are easy to wear, but the clothes are not easy to wear on the heart of God. But we need to be able to wear on our own. If we are able to wear on this, I can see from which way I see the world, or I can see what my heart is, then I should be only the clothes of God. I should be the clothes of God. राइटियसनेस का धर्म का रंग होना चाहिए सात्विक रंग होना चाहिए तभी जाके जो शुद्ध एब्सोल्यूट रियलिटी है तभी जाके मेरे को उसके दर्शन हो पाएंगे तो सारा जो स्पिरिचुअल वर्क है एक्चुअली वो हमारे को प्योरिफाई करने में लगता है जो सोल के ऊपर की कवरिंग्स है इवेंचुअली जब हम प्योर हो जाते हैं अपने मन बुद्धि अहंकार चित्त में तो अपने आप ही आईनेस भी ट्रांसेंड हो जाती है और हम ट्रू इमेज अपने आप बन जाते हैं सो इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट वी एंड एंड हमारा हार्ट या मन का क्या रंग है ये उस पर निर्भर करेगा कि हम इस दुनिया से कौन सा डेटा कलेक्ट कर रहे हैं कि हम कितने ज्यादा सेंसेस में जी रहे हैं सो so, अगर हम सारा डेटा केवल सेंसेस से ही कलेक्ट करते जा रहे हैं वो हमारे सबकॉन्शियस में इकट्ठा होता जा रहा है और वही हमारा फ्यूचर बिहेवियर भी गवर्न कर रहा है तो अगेन हम इस दुनिया के रंग में ही फंस रहे हैं उसकी जगह राम नाम या भगवान का नाम लेने से सारा टाइम और मेडिटेशन करने से जो है वो जो दुनिया के रंग है वो धुल जाता है और यदि राम नाम स्थित हो जाए हमारे मन में तो ऑटोमेटिकली जो है जो नाम होता है उसको भगवान भी माना जाता है तो राम नाम एक ऐसा मैथमेटिकल फॉर्मूला है जिससे जो मिरर है वो हमारा साफ हो जाता है और राम उसमें प्रकट हो जाते हैं मैन आई से राम जस्ट नॉट मीन द the idol of ram or the ideal ram roop that was born in treta yuga ram is the ever present eternal uh, beautiful truthful reality and that starts to reflect in us so this is the science of the mind and the sutra 19 what patanjali said is that the mind is not self luminous means mind ki apni light nahi hai mind kaise uh, uh, lit hota hai अब एक आप अपने रूम में अगर देखें अगर आप सारी लाइट्स ऑफ कर दें तो रूम का कोई भी ऑब्जेक्ट आपको दिखेगा नहीं है ना तो क्यों क्योंकि ऑब्जेक्ट सेल्फ लुमिनस नहीं है जब ऑब्जेक्ट के ऊपर लाइट पड़ती है जब आप स्विच ऑन करते हो और ऑब्जेक्ट के ऊपर लाइट पड़ती है वो लाइट रिफ्लेक्ट होकर ऑब्जेक्ट से आपकी आंखों में आती है फिर आपको वो ऑब्जेक्ट दिखाई देता है सिमिलरली अब इसी सेम चीज को हम अपने माइंड पे अप्लाई करते हैं हमारे हमें अपने मन की थॉट्स जो है वो तभी नजर आती हैं या तभी हम सोच पाते हैं क्योंकि उसके ऊपर हमारे आत्मन की या सेल्फ की या पुरुषा की जो हम सब में है उसकी लाइट उस पर आती है और वो फिर रिफ्लेक्ट होती है इसीलिए हम अपनी थॉट्स को देख पाते हैं और इसीलिए हम कंट्रोल कर सकते हैं कि हम अपनी थॉट से एंगेज करें या ना करें अगर पुरुष की लाइट नहीं होगी तो माइंड भी इल्यूमिन नहीं हो सकता है माइंड की अपनी कोई लाइट नहीं है इट इज द लाइट ऑफ द सेल्फ दैट इल्यूम ऑल द एस्पेक्ट ऑफ द माइंड वेदर इट इज मन बुद्धि अहंकार चित्ता नॉट ओनली डज द पुरुषा is the owner of the body and the prana it is also the owner and director of the mind and the mind is a different reality than purusha and yahi discrimination jo hai ek yogi ne develop karni hoti hai jo seer aur seen mein real aur unreal mein permanent aur temporary mein farak karna seekh jata hai so is science ko yadi hum samjhenge तो हमारे लिए अपने ही ये जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट ऑफ द माइंड इसके साथ वर्क करना आसान हो जाएगा ज्यादातर प्रॉब्लम ये आती है हम सोचने लगते हैं हम अपने माइंड है हम थॉट्स हैं हम ये जो सोचते हैं ये हम हैं हम नहीं हैं मेडिटेशन से हमें रियलाइज होता है कि हम फिटनेस हैं और हम इन थॉट्स को वॉच कर सकते हैं और ये हमसे डिफरेंट है सो so, ये हमें याद रखना है कॉन्टिन्यूंग विद द नेक्स्ट सूत्र विच इज सूत्र ट्वेंटी पतंजलि से एक समय चोभयान वधारणम मीन्स 
the mind is unable to cognize the, the two things at the same time. If the mind was self-luminous, it would be able to cognize everything at the same time, which it cannot. So, this argument is given that the mind is self-luminous because it can identify one thing at one time. If the mind is omnipresent, our individual mind is omnipresent. What is omnipresent is the purusha. Is the self, is the Atman. Okay, it is working with individual minds. So here the argument is that because it can know only one thing at a time, if focused fully, then th therefore it is not self luminous. So uh, the explanation is if you pay deep attention to one thing, you lose another. If the mind were self luminous, there would be no such limit to the impressions that it would receive. The Purusha, however, can cognize all in one moment. Therefore, the purusha is self-luminous and the mind is not. Okay. Sutra number 21. Chittan tara drishye buddhi buddhe rati prasangha smriti sankarascha. Meaning, another cognizing mind being assumed, there will be no mind, no end to such assumptions and confusion of memory. So, this is what we कि अगर हम ये सोचें कि पुरुषा नहीं माइंड को एल्यूमिन कर रहा एक और माइंड उस माइंड को ऑब्जर्व कर रहा है एल्यूमिन कर रहा है तो ऐसे तो एक सीरीज ऑफ माइंड्स जो हैं वो क्रिएट हो जाएंगे और तभी भी आप उसको प्रॉब्लम को सॉल्व नहीं कर सकोगे सो टू एक्सप्लेन इट फर्दर लेट अस सपोज दैट देयर इज अनदर माइंड व्हिच कॉग्नाइजेस द फर्स्ट माइंड सो देयर देयर हैव विल हैव टू बी समथिंग व्हिच कॉग्नाइजेस द सेकंड माइंड and so there will be no end to the number of minds that you need. This will result in the confusion of memory. There will be no storehouse of memory which is stable. Swami Kriyananda Ji says, if the complete cognition of one mind by another were possible, one would have to postulate an infinite number of such cognizing minds resulting in a mixture of memories. Such perfect cognition is possible only in the Atman, which is the one source of all awareness. <coughs> Sorry. So the, the reasoning again uh, explains that, you know, mind is not luminous. So uh, it's, it's clarifying. And why is uh, Patanjali so adamant at clarifying about what the mind is and what is its identity is because he wants to explain to you that you are not the mind. This is the Kaivalya path and he wants you to take you to the point where you say you are the absolute one reality, the Purusha of which mind is an instrument. And once you know this science of the mind, you will be able to separate yourself, uh, the, the true self from the thinking mind. So that's why he is just giving all these things because it is common misconception that we are the mind. Sutra number 22. Chittair prati sankramaya stada karapato swabuddhi samvedanam, meaning the essence of knowledge being unchangeable when the mind takes its form, it becomes conscious. When the purusha shines upon the mind, the mind for the time being becomes knowing and seems as if it were itself the purusha. Swami Kriyananda Ji says, the consciousness of the self never changes, but when its reflection appears in the mind, the mind is illuminated with the individual intelligence. So, what is this? Because our mind is light on our mind, self, ki atman, ki light on our mind, it is ho hai. Hai. So, the consciousness which is ever present and present everywhere is shining forth through the mind. Therefore, the overlap and the confusion arises that the mind seems to be lit. Okay, it appears to be lighted up, but it is not self-luminous. So, we are clear clarity that why do we feel that the mind is a reality that means it is shining in the ultimate reality. Hai. It's because the consciousness, which is the light of the universe, shines through each mind. Tabhi toh, jab wo shine karegi through each mind, tabhi toh wo is dunia mein function karta hai eventually. 
And because it is overlapping and it is hidden and transcendent, therefore we seem it appears that the mind is luminous, although it is not. Okay. So a simple day-to-day -day example hai, jaise winters mein hum kai sari layers pehemte hai kapde, ki. You know, so ek, ek inner warmer hota hai, uske upar ek or shirt hogi, uske upar ek sweater hoga, uske upar jacket hoga, uske upar probably shawl bhi hogi. So jab hum ek person ko point out karte hai, to hum kate ye hai wo person. Ab actually wo person un sari kapdoon se farak hai, but kyunki wo usne wo kapde pehen rakhe hai, to hum ek common general language mein ye kehte hai ki ye hai ye person because he is working through those clothes you know so what i'm trying to say is there are layers over the atman like the mind one buddhi ahankar chinta like the prana like the layer of feelings the, the then the un, the annamaya kosh or the body itself so kyunki itni sari layers hain aur wo uh, consciousness hi in sub layers ko actually light up karti hai so in general terms, ये लिया जाता है कि ये 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 mind ही है जो कि luminous है. So इसी तरह uh, confusion हो सकती है daily basis में. In fact, सारी दुनिया इसी confusion में जीती है. But एक yogi जो होता है, वो ये समझ पाता है कि वो luminous atman है और उसकी अपनी स्वयं की जो रोशनी है, जो स्वयं की ज्योति है, उसी से ही उसके मन के जो विचार हैं, वो उजागर हो रहे हैं. और यदि वो ज्योति ना हो, तो ना मन है ना ये दुनिया है और कुछ भी एग्जिस्ट नहीं करता है ओके इट्स जस्ट अ लिटिल मोर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑन दिस इट स्वामी जी सेस इट इज लाइक रिफ्लेक्शन ऑफ वन मून थ्रू मेनी पॉट्स ऑफ वाटर द मून रिफ्लेक्टेड देयर इज वन एंड द सेम बट द इंडिविजुअल रिफ्लेक्शंस मे वेरी अकॉर्डिंग टू द साइज ऑफ द पॉट द कलर ऑफ द वाटर whether the wind is blowing on the water or not causing waves and so on so although all of us are animated by the same divine consciousness or uh, many factors affect the manifestation of that consciousness in each one of us like our good bad or upwardly and downwardly activating qualities like the clarity of our intelligence like our own set of desires and attachment and the strength of our dependence on the ego so the same light is shining and making their minds luminous but because of these different qualities each mind takes up a different color appears to be different and that a different appearance appears as if it is that reality but it is that same one light that shines in and through all minds. Sutra number 23. Drashta drishyo pastam chitam sarvartham, meaning colored by the seer and the seen, the mind is able to understand everything. On the one side, the external world is being reflected and on the other side, the uh, self is being reflected. Thus comes the power of all knowledge to the mind. So Swami Kriyananda says, the chitta understands everything according to how it is affected by its own nature and by what it sees. So, this is very interesting. If we go to this mind, there is a mind in the beach. And on the other side, there are all the things in this world, all the objects in this world. जिसकी जो फिजिकल लाइट जब उन पर पड़ती है तो माइंड उनको परसीव करता है और वो डेटा उसमें से लेता है ऑन दी अदर साइड ऑफ द माइंड इज द पुरुषा जिसकी रोशनी से माइंड इट फंक्शन कर पाता है सो समवेयर माइंड इज इन द मिडल एंड इट इज एक्चुअली द पुरुषा विच इज सींग थ्रू द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड थ्रू द एजेंसी ऑफ द माइंड सो द सेंसेज आर कन्वेइंग सम डेटा into the mind and the very fact that the mind is functioning is because the light of the purusha is being reflected in the mind and is able to therefore uh, collect the various collect and analyze the various uh, data of this world you know it's the purusha is all knowing it's like it plays the game of it limits itself when it when god takes a human form he is playing a game with me, himself basically so he says, okay, let me limit myself and then let me see whether I can find myself again or not. It's like a hide and seek thing. 
and then the the story begins the maya has been created so that god is having a fun ride through ups and downs saap sidi ka khel hai kabhi upar chad gaye kabhi niche utar gaye kabhi roye kabhi hase ye sab karte karte bhagwan khud jo jinhone khud ko khud hi ghumaya ghumaya hai andar lost karwaya hai वो स्वयं को ढूंढने का फिर वो गुरु आ जाते हैं योगी आ जाते हैं संत आ जाते हैं उस सांप सीढ़ी के खेल में आपको बचाने के लिए और फिर वो आप वापस अपने मूल रूप में स्वरूप में आ जाते हो सो so एक्चुअली ये गेम ही है बिकॉज गॉड इज नेवर लॉस्ट ही इट ओनली अपियर्स टू बी लॉस्ट इन दिस वर्ल्ड ऑफ माया गॉड इज ऑलवेज अवेयर ऑफ हु इज ओके बट बिकॉज मेले में इतना अभी इतना इंटरेस्टिंगली भगवान ने इमोशंस बनाए हैं ये मन बुद्धि अहंकार चित्ता बनाया ही क्यों है ये सारा गेम तभी तो सक्सेसफुल होगा ना जब हमें लगने लगेगा कि हम ये छोटे से शरीर हैं फिर हमें इस दुनिया की चीजें चाहिए तभी तो ये तभी तो मेला लगेगा तभी तो ये दुनिया चलेगी वरना अगर सबको पता ही हो कि हम तो है ही ईश्वर या ब्राह्मण या दैट वन रियालिटी तो फिर ये गेम का कुछ फन नहीं है तो गेम चलेगा नहीं तो इस बात को हमेशा याद रखना है कि ये एक्चुअली गेम ही है और ये इतना कॉम्प्लेक्स भगवान ने बनाया ताकि आपको रियल बन लगे और सारे जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैं ये आपके यूज के लिए हैं ये आपके स्लेव होने चाहिए ना कि आप इन सब इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स के स्लेव बन जाओ आपको सेंसेस का स्लेव नहीं बनना है आपको अपने मन के विचारों का स्लेव नहीं बनना है यदि आप अपने विचारों में खो जा रहे हो और सोच रहे हो यार मेरे तो से तो थॉट्स ही नहीं कंट्रोल हो रही हैं तो आप स्लेव बन चुके हो तो स्लेव जब बन चुके हो तो फिर आता है प्राणायाम का रोल आ जाता है जो गुरु गिवन क्रिया टेक्निक में है उसका प्रयोग करो उस टेक्निक को प्रयोग करके आप अपने मन को अपने वश में करो और जब मन को वश में करोगे जब इंस्ट्रूमेंट आपको पता चल जाएगा कि आप मास्टर हो और ये केवल एक इंस्ट्रूमेंट है तो आप धीरे धीरे उस प्योरिटी और उस एब्सोलूट ट्रूथ की तरफ अपने आप बढ़ते जाओगे सो ऑलवेज रिमाइंड योर सेल्फ आई एम नॉट अ स्लेव टू एनी थिंग अराउंड मी दैट स्पेशली इन माई ओन माइंड एंड इन माई ओन बॉडी आई एम द मास्टर एंड देन डू द थिंग्स विच विल हेल्प यू टू मेक यू the master of all the instruments that have been given to you that includes your body that includes your prana that includes the talents that you have that includes the mind that you think with so make sure always that you have an upper hand and that you are not downcast because of these things eventually this is all a drama this is all a game it is a leela enjoy the game enjoy the leela enjoyment will come only once you are not so emotionally involved with the game so witness banna bahut zaruri hai is duniya mein bahut kuch ho raha hai hone dijiye agar aap aap change don't involve yourself with the especially the political scenario that happens around don't go so much into the news don't read read too many magazines which tell you this and that but stay more inward towards that one reality and you will find that the drama of this world doesn't affect you that much and of course you have to work with your emotions and emotions ke sath work karne ka ek hi simple tarika hai ki usko devotion mein convert kar diya jaye yani ki bhakti bhav laiye ab chant kijiye roz pray kijiye surround yourself with those vibrations do not leave god at all at any point in time and you will find that the it doesn't matter uh, how the world functions aap dheere dheere usse upar jayenge usi tarah dekhiye jo example lotus flower ka diya jata hai har shastra mein hamare diya jata hai ki kamal ke phool ki tarah bano kyun kyunki wo kichad mein ugta hai to ye kaha gaya hai to ye duniya kichad ki tarah hai jo ye aise hi rehni hai lekin wo untouched rehta hai uski beauty aur purity जो है उसकी लीफ की और फ्लावर की दोनों की अनटच रहती है इवन दो वो ऑल द टाइम कीचड़ में ही रहता है सो so इसी तरह इस वर्ल्ड में रह कर भी हमें अपने इनर प्योरिटी इनर स्टेबिलिटी इंटेग्रिटी बना कर रखनी है एंड दैट इज द टेस्ट देर विल बी सो मेनी टेम्पटेशन टू लूज इट आउट बट आपका टेस्ट है कि आपने वो फूल की तरह सुंदर भी रहना है मीन्स मन से सुंदर रहना है प्योर रहना है और अपनी खुशबू औरों में भी 
फैलानी है और अपने आकर्षण से औरों को भी भगवान की तरफ लेकर आना है यही हमारा होमवर्क है बेसिकली ओके सो वॉट वी सेड इन दिस सूत्रा इज दैट ऑन फॉर द माइंड ऑन वन साइड इज द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड द अदर साइड इज द पुरुषा विच इज एक्चुअली द ट्रू सोर्स ऑफ लाइट विच इज सेल्फ लुमिनस सूत्र नंबर ट्वेंटी फोर तद संख्यमी परार्थ संहत्य कारित्वात मीनिंग द माइंड थ्रू इट्स इन्यूमरेबल डिजायर्स एक्ट्स फॉर एनादर द पुरुषा सो इसमें क्लियरली कह दिया गया है कि माइंड जो है वो किसके लिए काम कर रहा है इवेंचुअली ये सब जो ड्रामा चल रहा है किसके लिए चल रहा है तो भगवान के लिए चल रहा है पुरुषा के लिए चल रहा है तो इस बात को हम मान लेंगे कि ये लीला जो है ये कौन चला रहा है जब हमें ये समझ आ जाएगा तो हम इससे विड्रॉ कर पाएंगे और उसको एंजॉय कर पाएंगे द माइंड इज अ कंपाउंड ऑफ वेरियस थिंग्स इट एग्जिस्ट एंड वर्क फॉर द पुरुषा desires and attachments exist for another for they cannot act except in association with it so ego bhi jo hai yadi hum dekhe ego kahan se aayi hai kisne banayi hai ego it is also a projection of the purusha it appears to be limited in time in space in a particular body in a particular uh, set of thoughts and personality but eventually what is the source of that the source is god the source is the purusha the source is you yourself when i say purusha or god it just does not mean it is something beyond you something up above in the sky it is something which is right here which is right now which is you yourself remember that you are the light the abstract truth that is living through this bodily form you are not this bodily form so if you are that abstract light you are it is your light which is shining on your mind and body and this world which makes it alive jab subah uthte hain to duniya hai jab hum so rahe hain ego so rahi hai to temporarily to duniya nahi hai kya farak padta hai ye bhi nahi hame to neend mein ye bhi nahi malum hota ki hamara sharir bhi hai ki nahi hai aur sharir mein hum male hai ki female hai hamare parents kaun hai हम कहा से आए हैं कहा जाए कुछ मालूम नहीं होता है हमें तो वो जब जब आए आ जाता है तो दुनिया आ जाती है प्रकट हो जाती है और जब आए नहीं है तो ये दुनिया भी नहीं है ये बहुत ही सिंपल ट्रूथ है लेकिन इस सिंपल ट्रूथ को समझने में ही इतना टाइम लग जाता है कि वी द्योर अवेयरनेस द प्योर कॉन्शियसनेस विच इज लिविंग थ्रू दिस बॉडिली इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज द रियालिटी आई the infinite am the reality and i'm temporarily using the instrument of the mind the prana and the body to interact and have fun in this world and if i'm not having fun means i've got emotionally involved i need to just withdraw and again i will be able to see this life as a mere show now this show will have tragedies this show will have comedies but i will not get involved because this is purely a show of which i am a part okay so jis tarah se swapna mein hum hum do cheezon mein divide ho jate hain ek to wo jo ki hum ek character hote hain apne hi dream mein ki hamare ko koi mil raha hai ya hum kahin ja rahe hain so we are a character in the dream also we are the watcher of the dream hum sapna dekh bhi rahe hain और हम वो स्वप्न पुरुष भी हैं जो उसमें कैरेक्टर है सो so, हम हम ही हमारा माइंड स्टफ जो है वो दो चीजों में डिवाइड हो जाता है स्वप्न में इसी तरह जो प्योर आत्मन है जो प्योर विटनेस है कॉन्शियसनेस अवेयरनेस है वो अपने आप को इस दुनिया के स्वप्न पुरुष में मींस हम द ईगो में अपने आप को डिवाइड कर लेती है टू प्ले द गेम और टू ड्रीम द ड्रीम एंड देन इट हैज द पावर टू विथड्रॉ and we being children we being the swapna purush in this dream of life we are given the free choice and the free will to stop interacting now that is the beauty of this dream that we have the power to stop the dream if we want to do so and that is liberation to be able to stop this dream existence 
at will is what is moksha is what is liberation and it takes you towards Sachidananda, which is the ultimate infinite joyful truth of the universe and of you okay <clears throat> sutra number 25 vishesh darshin atma bhav bhav na vinit vritti for the discriminating the perception of the mind as the atman ceases through discrimination, the yogi knows that the purusha is not mind. Mind. So, yahi, jo confusion hai, jo hum samajhte hai ki hum mind hai, dhire dhire jo yogi hai, wo apna gyan se, bhakti se, aur har sari chizo, sabhi margo se, aur especially meditation se, ye jaan laat, uske ye jo knowledge hai, ye firm ho jati hai, emboss ho jati hai uske andar, ki wo mind nahi hai, he or she, or it is a separate reality, because I am a separate reality, for from all of this okay uh, swami kriyananda ji says for one who can distinguish between the mind and the self thoughts in the mind sees the mind is only a reflection of the indwelling soul or self when one sees beyond the thinking process to the silent observer within the self the mind's fluctuations Sees completely to exist. Okay, so how are we going to now? बहुत बातें हमने कर ली. I will just put up a question. According to you, how can we go beyond the mind? How can we go go transcend the mind? So एक तो ये इन्होंने बोला है कि we have to go beyond the thinking process. तो वो stop हो जाएगा. अब आप मुझे बताएंगे कि हम achieve कैसे करेंगे thinking process के परे कैसे जाएंगे एनीबडी वॉन्ट्स टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट एनी थॉट टू दिस आई थिंक एवरीबडी इज थिंकिंग एवरीबडी इज थिंकिंग हाउ टू गो बियॉन्ड द थॉट प्रोसेस ओके यस जॉय बेसिकली वट वी आर डिस्कसिंग इज लाइक टू काम द माइंड so when we calm the mind uh, then uh, that enhances our discrimination so when uh, and that uh, enhances also the luminosity of the soul that's purusha in the oh. process okay so, so calming the mind is what you are saying that is the crux how do we calm the mind that is uh, we have techniques from pranayam pratyaha dharan dhyan smati so that is, the, nice. that is where we need to focus and that is the answer to all the questions that is true so agar yadi hum abhi apne thought process ke pare nahi ja paaye hain to iska matlab hamari practices mein abhi kahin kuch thodi bahut kami reh gayi hai hame aur practice karne ki zarurat hai aur kriya yoga ki beauty beauty hi yahi hai that it holds we know how closely the breath and the mind are related so when we are able to control the breath we will automatically be able to control the mind so kriya ka bhi goal breathlessness hai kahin na kahin hongsao ka goal bhi breathlessness hai jab hum breathlessness mein jayenge to automatically thoughtlessness mein chale jayenge so yes these are the things that we need to follow another thing that happens that can happen in the path of bhakti yoga and that is what anjali just mentioned in the chat is that once you totally surrender to god सो वंस यू आर सरेंडरिंग तो जो भी हो रहा है इस लाइफ में आप उसके बारे में ज्यादा सोचते नहीं आप कहते हो भगवान भगवान भली करेंगे है ना आप एनालाइज करना बंद कर देते हो आप एटलीस्ट स्लोली काम हो जाता है माइंड बट जो इवेंचुअल स्टेट ऑफ थॉटलेसनेस और ब्रेथलेसनेस है वो बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड एंड गुरु ही आता है चाहे हम वो ध्यान योग का मार्ग लें या हम भक्ति योग का मार्ग लें कभी कभी हम इतने प्रेम भाव में आ सकते हैं बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ गॉड कि हमारी सांस और हमारा माइंड जो है दोनों स्थिर एकदम स्टिल हो सकता है और तब उस समय में हमें वो एहसास होता है कि हम कौन हैं हम क्या हैं तो इसीलिए जितने भी मार्ग हैं ज्ञान का ज्ञान मार्ग से भी यही ल्यूमिन होता है कि आप खोजें कि मेरी जो थॉट्स है किस कौन सोच रहा है ये थॉट्स फिर अपनी आई थॉट को ट्रेस करें 
और वो जाने कि वो आई थॉट भी एक्चुअली कुछ है नहीं इट्स अ मिराज सो इसी तरह हर मार्ग का एक तरीका है कि थॉट्स के परे जाना है लेकिन ये जान लीजिए कि जब तक आप थॉट्स के परे नहीं जाएंगे तब तक ये रियलाइजेशन कि आप कौन है या हम कौन है ये आ नहीं सकती इसीलिए अपनी प्रैक्टिसेस को हर भक्ति रूप में या ज्ञान रूप में या कर्म को हर में थोड़ा अप 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 कर लीजिए अप का मतलब ये नहीं होता है कि बहुत आप कंसंट्रेट कर रहे हो इतना स्ट्रेन कर रहे हो इतनी टेंशन ही बढ़ा लिया आपने कि मुझे तो थॉट के परे जाना है थॉट के इतने स्ट्रेन में तो कभी नहीं बढ़ा जा सकते थॉट के पीछे रिलैक्सेशन इज द की वन यू सरेंडर टू गॉड इन भक्ति Then you are actually relaxed. आपको रियली में फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा कि अगली एक रोटी आ रही है कि नहीं आपको पता है भगवान प्रोवाइड कर लेंगे इससे आपको कोई टेंशन नहीं है इसी तरह जब आप एक काम जब ध्यान की प्रैक्टिस करेंगे तो इतनी सिंसियरली आप प्रैक्टिस करेंगे कि आपको सिर्फ यही कंसर्न है कि उस समय में टेक्निक जो है वो फुली उस मोमेंट में फुली करूं और ऑटोमेटिकली उसका फल जो होता है वो ब्रेथलेसनेस की तरफ आपको ले जाता है तो बहुत सारी चीजें मिक्स करने की ना कोशिश करें कि कहने का मतलब रेस्टलेसनेस तब बढ़ती है जब हम ध्यान में बैठे हैं तो हम सोचते रहते हैं कि हमने आगे क्या काम निपटाने हैं और जब हम क्या काम कर रहे होते हैं तो हम सोचते हैं कि यार मुझे तो ध्यान करना था तो एक बार में एक ही चीज कीजिए है ना जब काम कर रहे हैं तो ध्यान काम करने से भी कैवल्य प्राप्त हो सकता है इतने ध्यान से इतने कॉन्सेंट्रेशन से काम कीजिए इतना दिल लगा के काम कीजिए कि वही मार्ग बन जाए आपका क्या वाले का तब ये मत सोचिए कि ओहो मुझे तो ध्यान करना चाहिए था जब भक्ति में लीन है तो पूरा प्रेम रस में डूब जाइए लेकिन जब ध्यान कर रहे हैं तो इतनी सिंगल पॉइंटेड कंसंट्रेशन होनी चाहिए कि फिर दुनिया के क्या काम है और क्या ये सब इंपॉर्टेंट नहीं होता तो अपने आप को एक समय में एक पल में एक चीज में पूरा डुबो लीजिए और तभी आप उस माइंड को ट्रांसेंट कर सकते हैं okay so thank you for that contribution we'll proceed to our next <clears throat> sutra sutra number 26 tada vivek nimnam kevalya prag bharam chittam then bent on discriminating the mind attains the previous state of kevalya The practice of yoga leads to discriminating power to clearness of vision. The veil drops from the eyes and we see things as they are. We find that this nature is a compound and is showing the panorama for the purusha who is the witness. That this nature is not the lord means the prakriti is not lord. That the whole of this combinations of nature are simply for the sake of showing these phenomena to the purusha the enthroned king within when discrimination comes by long practice fear ceases and the mind attains oneness when the chitta is drawn towards discrimination it gravitates towards absoluteness the last sutra for the evening Sutra number twenty-seven, and this Patanjali says, "Tachchi dreshu pratyant rani sanskare bhya," meaning the thoughts that arise as obstructions to that are from impressions. So all the various thoughts and ideas that arise, making us believe that we require something external to make us happy, are obstructions to that. perfection the purusha is happiness and blessedness by its own nature but that knowledge is covered by past impressions these impressions have to work themselves out <clears throat> swami kriyananda ji says as one is developing true perception distracting thoughts may arise in the mind owing to past impressions we should be careful to avoid <clears throat> these useless fillers which we sometimes use in our life like television radio you no know, temptation to call people all the time keep on mobiles and visit here visit there so because these these all 
why do we do all these things because we think that these things will give us happiness and we think wrongly because of our past impressions so we have to now change that we have to clean up the mess that has been created and again the situation is the same the marg is the same which is bhakti gyan raj and karma so try to overcome all these effects of past impressions by doing the right thing by going inwards by following the guru and by surrendering wholeheartedly to the lord and then when we do all of that we will become those flawless mirrors in which the image of the divine will uh, manifest and will reflect with all its glory and with all its beauty and power so with that thought uh, let us share these blessings and the power with souls everywhere let us pray together divine mother thou art omnipresent thou art in all thy children manifest thy healing presence in all bodies all minds and all souls oh Divine Mother, may thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion and may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.